Hi, I'm Randy Patterson, and this is Psychology Salon, a channel about psychological issues. If you like this kind of thing, click subscribe. This is a post about failure to launch, or as I prefer to call it, delayed transition to adulthood. The situation where a young adult has aged out of adolescence, but has difficulty seizing the reins of his or her own adulthood. And my focus here is on parenting style. Well, that should cause you to be suspicious right up front. Psychology has a long history of blaming parents for just about everything. So when we look at parenting style as a factor in failure to launch, we need to ask ourselves if we're just continuing that great and time-honored tradition. There are lots of factors involved in this situation, and only some of them have to do with the family. But it's undeniable. This overly dependent style of living requires two elements. A young adult who's getting more care and support than his or her resources and capacities should actually require. And a caregiver who is providing that extra care and support. And when we work with it in therapy, we can work on one end of that relationship or the other, or with the family as a whole. It's often most effective to work with the parents for a couple of reasons. First, they've been so focused on their worry about their young adult that they haven't been paying close attention to their own role and how it may be maintaining things. Second, they're often more motivated to produce change than their young adult is. They can see down the road and realize that this situation just cannot go on forever and that the longer it continues, the worse it gets. One of the things we talk about in therapy is that there's no such thing as the status quo. Things are either getting better or they're getting worse. If nothing is changing, they're getting worse because the dependent inactive life is getting more habitual with each day that passes. And the gaps in terms of life experience are getting wider and wider and wider. The gulf between this life and adult independence is increasing. It doesn't stay the same. But in examining the role of caregivers, there's the risk that people will just feel guilty. It's all my fault. I never taught him how to do laundry. I never let him help me cook. I handed out money rather than supporting employment. I never had the normal expectations that we would have of any roommate. And there's an odd thing that happens. The more guilty a parent feels, the more likely they are to continue in exactly the same pattern. This is my penance. It's my cross to bear for the failings earlier in my son or daughter's life. I now have to cook and clean and house him or her forever, and it's too late to change things. But there's an interesting phenomenon. Most individuals experiencing a delayed transition to adulthood have siblings, and those siblings are moving forward. Now, I don't mean to say that only children don't go through this. They do. And there's no good research suggesting that being an only child or having siblings makes it any more or less likely. But the point is, when there's more than one offspring in a family, they tend to differ in how fast they take to adult independence. And parents often feel, look, I probably was a little different with each one, but not that much. They got pretty close to the same environment and the same parenting style, and so far we have very different outcomes. Sometimes siblings have studied like mad or 
gone out and gotten early jobs as teenagers or developed great passions and pursued them or whatever. And others? Less so. One reason for this is that sibling life ex experiences, they really do differ. They have different peer groups, they have different experiences in school, different events in their lives. Another factor is perspective. Different people in the same family are actually occupying different positions and roles. An older sibling, for example, might get more attention initially, or they might have more responsibility for brothers or sisters, and they might be hovered over more than the younger ones. Or the younger ones might feel more ignored, or they might get more indulged, or they might get more help by looking helpless. There's also no data on birth order and the likelihood of delays at the adolescent to adult transition. But the point is, no two people experience the same family the same way. But then there's a factor that I think is even more important. There is no such thing as a perfect parenting style. People are different. Parenting one way will work great with some kids and not so great with others. The outcome depends to a great extent on a match between a parent's way of being and a child's nature. For example, a parent who's very focused on keeping a child safe may be great for a kid who's really impulsive and needs to pay more attention to the possible risks out there. But if they have a kid who's more naturally cautious, they might just be ramping up that kid's anxiety to the point that they can't move. Conversely, a very hands-off, laissez-faire parenting style might work great with an introspective kid who has a fascination for books. But with a very outward-focused kid, it might mean that they run wild and get into all kinds of trouble. When I'm working with parents of young adults having difficulty at that transition to adulthood, I really try to work on the reflexive guilt they're experiencing. Again partly because their guilt tends to make them want to compensate by doing even more for their young adult, and that's usually not helpful. But partly it's because it's clear that their parenting wasn't so bad. With many kids, it would have gone fine. It was just a mismatch for this particular kid. Now, of course, some parents can point to things they did that genuinely wasn't so great. They were neglectful, they yelled a lot, maybe they were a bit alcoholic, or they tried to motivate their kid by criticizing everything they did, or they let the kid get away with murder. Okay, but we still don't have a time machine. We cannot go back and change things. We can help the young adult work some of that stuff through, but eventually we still arrive back at the present with the same question. What now? Given everything that's happened, this is still your life. And how are you going to spend it? What are you going to make of it? No one can take it over for you. It's yours, no matter how damaged you feel. No matter what deprivations you've had, no matter how deficient your family was, it's your life. And the driver's seat is waiting for you. For parents, accepting that the past is the past, that no parent is ever perfect, and that although you can apologize for your errors, you cannot erase them. That can be important. It brings us back to the present and how you are now. What you're doing now. What your role in the dance is now. Part of that may be recognizing that there may have been a mismatch between style at some point and the kid it was being used with. 
not necessarily something to trash yourself about. Guilt exists for a reason, to guide future behavior. But sometimes it just cements old patterns in place. And in families with delayed transition to adulthood, the old patterns are not working. We need a new approach. There are other videos on this channel on the subject of failure to launch or delayed transition to adulthood, and many of these concern parenting. Click the subscribe button for more. For parents who find themselves in this situation, I also have an online course. Not therapy, but it is informational. The course is called The Parent Trap, and it's available from my education site here. Thanks for watching.